Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cultivated Church Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Kelly. And before we get started on this episode, I want to tell you about a couple of events that are coming up that I think you'll really enjoy. First of all, we're going to be having a Cultivate Gathering. If you have questions, if you want more information, if you want to get connected, I will be there. Kyle will be there. Terry will be there. We're going to be at Forest Ridge Calvary Chapel, and that's in Austin, Texas. It's Saturday, May 18th. You can register and find out more information at forestridgecalvary.com. Secondly, would you like to be equipped and inspired? Does learning and collaborating amongst fellow Christians sound encouraging and refreshing? Then you should come to the CGN Calvary Chapel International Conference. It's June 23rd to the 26th at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. You can register online at conference.calvarychapel.com. This year's theme is Hope, Suffering, and Glory, Studies in 1 Peter. We're going to have nine speakers addressing topics taken from 1 Peter, June 23rd to 26th. Register at conference.calvarychapel.com. All right, let's get into this week's episode. God bless. Welcome to the Cultivate Church Planting Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Brian Kelly, and we've got a great episode today. I'm here with two amazing stand-up fellows uh, two friends of mine, um, uh, Terry Michaels and Kyle Curry. Terry is the uh, pastor in Austin, Texas. Uh, it used to be called Calvary Chapel Austin. What's it called now? The Forest Ridge Calvary Chapel. Forest Ridge Calvary Chapel. And we'll talk about the name change and maybe some of the things that went into that um, in, a, in a minute. But then we also have uh, Kyle Curry, who's been on the show before. And um, Kyle, welcome back. Thanks, man. It's good to be here. Yep, and Kyle is also in the midst of an exciting church plant himself. He was on the episode uh, where we talked about new church planters and planting in uh, a coffee shop. But you're not there anymore. No, nope, we're, we're not there. <laughs> he graduated yeah. out of the coffee shop. Yeah. You still get the <laughs> coffee from the place or no? Um, I do every day, but the church sadly Whoa. does not. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of coffee are you brewing? Just for our I, listeners, I'm, I'm ashamed to say. Uh, you have to say it. This is we're, we're learning we're getting, here. Uh, Kirkland signature. What's wrong with that? What are you ashamed well, of Kirkland? You it's, ashamed it's, of Costco? That's it's, Costco. No, I love Costco, <laughs> but I, but I, their coffee is Starbucks coffee, so it's not good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember we talked about this last time. I think yeah. I lost like a third of our listeners after you said Starbucks edit, was not good edit, coffee. Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> what about Frappuccino, Kyle? I don't drink that, but maybe okay. it's good. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get right into it. We're going to be talking about church planting. What else? And uh, I just want to let everybody know that um, Kyle, myself, and Terry are going to be together live in Austin, Texas, uh, to do a cultivate um, training. Uh, what what do we call it? A seminar. Really? <laughs> yeah, mini conference, along with some other exciting stuff. Uh, Terry, why don't you run us through the um, what we're going to be doing there and uh, what you have planned? Yeah, and, and you know, uh, even conference might be too big of a word. I'm calling it more of a, a gathering. Okay. Um, yeah. There's so many conferences going on, and people think of lecture upon lecture. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to keep this real casual to where the talks would be kind of brief, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and then followed by a Q&A session, a panel discussion, and make it real interactive and put a lot of emphasis on fellowship and creating an environment where people feel comfortable to ask questions. Great. And I would encourage anybody who's in uh, in the area uh, to attend that. It's going to be free of charge. You can get more information at uh, cultivatechurchplanting.com. That's our website. And you'll see um, there's a link at the top that talks about our gatherings. And so we'll be there in Austin. What are the dates again, Terry? I should know this. Uh, I should know it too. <laughs> <laughs> May 18th. I know it. Oh, Kyle knows it. <laughs> May 18th. So um, if you're available, go on the website and click that link. You can also go on um, Terry's church website, I believe. Is that correct, Terry, to get that the information? That is correct. Yeah, you could even register on there as well. At, oh, perfect. Uh, ForestRidgeCalvary.com. ForestRidgeCalvary.com. And go on there and listen to a few uh, sermons, online sermons of Pastor Terry while you're at it. Some good stuff. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All 
Okay, so Kyle, let's go to you first. What's going on these days? What's uh, tell us tell us about church planting in the is it second year now or third? Um, third year. We're going into the third year. Yeah. So okay. we planted in January of twenty one. So yeah, no oh, twenty two. January twenty two. So it's uh, I don't know. Honestly, I think it's been two. It's been, January was two years, so we're a little over okay. two years. Yeah. Okay. Going into the third year, uh, we started in um, a coffee shop, and that was great. And we went to two services, which was necessary, but that wasn't great because the facility wasn't large. It wasn't like we had a couple hundred people and then yeah. we had to split 200 into 100 and 100. I mean, we had like 70 adults. We had to split it between 35 and 35. And so, as you know, a room with 35 people um, feels a lot uh, – it feels empty, right? Mm -hmm. And so – out of necessity, we couldn't get more people in, so we went to two services. But it just it didn't accomplish the the uh, the mission, and so yeah. we realized quickly it was time to find a place we can get back to one service until we can grow to kind of critical mass to be able to split into two services. Terry, um, I'll come back uh, in a second, Kyle. But that brings up oh, a good question. Gonna, yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> no, you've got a lot more to say because I know that God's doing some really cool stuff there <laughs> in uh, Murfreesboro. But Terry. And we just we just went to two services too, and I know there's a lot of uh, pastors out there or potential church planters that are asking the question like, when do you do two services? I'm I'm assuming Terry that you've done multiple services before, or what's your situation? Yeah, we're doing uh, two services as well, and um, you know I think it really depends on the size of the room and the amount of people. Obviously, mm -hmm. the size of the room is going to dictate that. And a lot of times it's the children's ministry that dictates that. It's mm -hmm. not that the auditorium or the sanctuary is full. It's that the kids' ministry is full. Um, and that's what initially drew, drove us to two services way back when, where we just didn't have enough space for the kids. So there's a lot of factors that can play into that. Size of the room, amount of people, amount of kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's one of the reasons why we did it too, was the children's ministry. But then we... Uh, we did this thing where, um, and looking back, maybe it would have been better to do it different, but we just did children's ministry at one service. We had nursery at both because nursery was really the, the, um, that's the kind of growth. That's the growth point at our church with the young families and stuff. So, um, we did children's ministry at the second service. So now all the families came to the second service and we didn't really solve the, the the problem there so we should have done children's ministry at both of them maybe i don't know yeah well that could be a challenge too and i know a lot of churches follow that same category where you just don't have the infrastructure for children's ministry in both services but at least you can offer an alternative to those people who are serving in the children's ministry that they're exactly not, yeah. you know they're not being out of fellowship you know four mm -hmm. times a week because they're ministering so, Terry, how long have you been a pastor, and uh, how did you end up in, in Austin? Well, well, I started as a youth pastor back in San Bernardino, California, at the Calvary Chapel there. And um, we started that church uh, back in 1981, and uh, we're there for 15 years. Um, and they got the call to the mission field. And then uh, coming off the mission field from Ziegen, Germany, we planted a Calvary Chapel in San Marcos, Texas, and that was back in 1997. And so we were there 12 years. Uh, the church blossomed from, you know, just meeting in our living room to meeting in a hotel, um, you know, facility, and then other rentals to having our own facility. And um, then in 2009, I was asked to come up to Calvary Austin, take over a church. But uh, it's all been an awesome journey. And so been at it a good while. Very cool. What was it like meeting in the, I've always wondered about meeting in a hotel because I felt like it just, so two things like in church planting, you got guys meeting in schools. We've done that. Um, you have people meeting in movie theaters. Um, there's a, a guy, Pastor Billy here in Florida meets in a movie theater. And then you got people meeting in hotel, uh, like whether it's a ballroom or a convention center room or whatever. But how, how I know about the I, so my my thing is I feel weird about meeting in the movie theater because I don't know why I don't know why I should feel weird it about it. Like but popcorn. 
Yes. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> and I didn't ask Billy if they make popcorn on Sunday, but I think they might. It's not a bad idea. But I don't know. It's just my thing. But what's it? I mean, meeting in the hotel, what was that like for church you know, planners it, that may want to look at that we, option? We were able to grow there, but it was slow growth. I mean, there are a lot of people that do have hangups with it. I remember uh, one fellow calling and uh, asking where we meet and I told him, or at the Howard Johnson's in the, uh, you know, in the banqueting room. He goes, there's no way I'm going to take my wife to a hotel for church. So, <laughs> but then there are other people who are very excited about a new work. Um, yeah. One of the benefits about meeting in the hotel, at least with us, is they provided free coffee and pastries. So <laughs> oh, wow. That was, that was always right. good. But um, we did grow there, but it was it was rather slow growth. That's incentive, right, Kyle, to have a continental breakfast when you come to, to church. Most people can That's just it. do Starbucks, but yeah. we we actually do <laughs> uh, pastries every every Sunday. We have different uh, people volunteer to bake them, and we have some really talented and gifted bakers in the church, and so it's awesome. I always look forward to when Brooke, shout out to Brooke, when she makes her blueberry muffin like cookie things. Oh, they're so good. That's good. Yeah, whatever it takes, right? Get them in the door. Whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> but back to you, Kyle. Your your church is doing really great, and you are a uh, a product of first of all the Lord and what He's done in your life and and your vision and everything. But you went through the Cultivate Church Planting uh, Planting Program, and yeah. uh, a real success story of that. But why don't you talk a little bit about that? I mean, we've we've done this a little bit on another episode, but just yeah. refresh our memory. What was it like going through Cultivate, and uh, where are you right now? Yeah, so I was the actual very first person to actually go through the program. I was the the guinea pig. You're the pig, first, so the very first. <laughs> wow, that's what I've been told. yeah, that's what I've been told. So that's what we tell everyone. Yeah, no. <laughs> dang it, never mind. You're special. <laughs> I've been called that my whole life. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out why. No, but so I was. Uh, yeah, I went through it. Uh, I go four four years ago now. Right, we first moved out here to Tennessee and. Um, it was good. I think the best thing about it was just the coaching and the mentorship that came out of it. You know, because mm -hmm. I, I was on staff for since 2008 to 2020, so like 12 years. Like, so it wasn't new to like pastoral ministry. It wasn't new to the church world. And so um, I didn't need as much as the nut and bolts of how to run a small group as I did just coaching through everyday life things and the nearness mm -hmm. of a coach. And so that was the best thing. My, my favorite thing I took away from uh, Cultivate. And now I get to be a part of that and help other guys go through that as well. And I don't speak from all this crazy experience, but um, what I do have is just, I know what it's like to go through uh, with somebody by my side. And uh, that was Jeff Guype and is still is Jeff Guype. He was the one that kind of mentored me through that on this side over here in Tennessee. And it was awesome. So I highly Very recommend cool. and encourage, and you should get plugged in to cultivate if you're not. Yeah, and it really is, a, unlike a lot of other church planning programs, it really is a um, work together with the local church, a very relationship-based thing. So it's not a, a huge, complicated series of steps you have to go through, but it's basically let's connect people up with not only their local church, with mentors, but also coaches that have been through the process, who know what they're doing, can kind of go along along with you each step of the way, however the Lord is leading you to plant. Um, we have a goal, a desire, rather, to plant uh, a thousand churches in 10 years, Calvary Chapels, and um, so excited about that, and we're seeing some good progress. And part of the progress is due to, and I just want to give you two uh, big props right now, is um, for both Terry and Kyle are part of our leadership team. So if you do go on that Cultivate Church Planning website, you'll be able to see um, the leadership team there right on the on the homepage. Right on the homepage. You guys made it. You really, really arrived. <laughs> made it to what? I don't know. But you made front page. Are, yeah, you made the front page news. No, but they're, uh, they and a few others, uh, including myself, are um, really spearheading what we – uh, believe is this next generation of Calvary Chapel church plants. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you, Pastor Terry, you've been a part of Calvary Chapel for quite a long time since, if I can remember, is it 81 that you started out? Uh, in 1980. 1980. Yep. Yeah. 
So we all, all three of us and the others who are on that leadership team with Cultivate uh, love Calvary Chapel, love the verse by verse teaching, love the simplicity of it and uh, just being led by the spirit. So Mm -hmm. yeah, these guys have been able to join that, that team, that leadership team and help us really shift, shift into the next year. (laughs) I, I feel like uh, for the, the future of what Cultivate is doing and what Calvary Chapel church planning is doing. So Terry, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? Are we going to, are we going to see another revival? Are we going to plant more churches? What's going on? Well, I think so. Um, I mean, I know the Lord is already blessing this initiative of, of Cultivate. You know, I'm so grateful for it uh, because I didn't have it uh, back when I church planted in 1997. Um, you know, it was kind of like goodbye and good luck. You know? <laughs> and it, you know, I wasn't in touch with really anybody and mm-hmm. I didn't have anybody mentoring me. I didn't know the first thing about church planting. Just I had the call from the Lord. I showed up in a city where I didn't know a soul. And uh, I would have really loved to have somebody, uh, you know, speaking into my life at that time and encouraging me. And uh, we just didn't have that sort of thing back yeah. then. If there was that kind of thing, I, I'd never heard of it. But um, yeah, when I found out about Cultivate, it's like this this is something that our movement needs is to get yeah. just a little more organized in, in church planting and have the mentoring and discipleship and encouragement and everything else that goes with it, the training. Yeah, totally. And I think it's that, the you know, it's the simplicity of it too. It's it's just, it, it works really well with the Calvary Chapel. For those of you who are not f- familiar with Calvary Chapel, um, it was basically started in the 60s and Jesus Revolution and verse-by-verse teaching plus the power of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and really kind of took off from there organically, I would say, as guys went out, like Terry and others to plant churches, not really knowing how or what to do, but um, feeling that call, being led by the Spirit, and God's faithful. He's always faithful. But now to be able to kind of uh, put some, put a little bit of uh, guide rails on, I would say, a little bit of, uh, um, you know, seeing, you know, getting the process of seeing, asking the questions, are you called to church plant? Is this right for you? That sort of stuff. Um, can really be helpful. And look, mm-hmm. Kyle's here. Look at Kyle, not first guy to do it. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so Kyle, da- down in, uh, or up in Tennessee, I guess I should say, because I'm down in Florida. But you guys were in a coffee shop. Last time we talked to you, you were meeting. It was really a cool opportunity where you were able to go in. You knew the coffee shop owners you were able to meet there on Sundays, have a church service, like you said, about room for about 70, which isn't a lot if you're trying to, if you're, if people are coming and you're growing. Yeah. But um, it, uh, you've since moved to a new location. Why don't you tell us about that? Cause it's a pretty yeah. interesting story and I'm going to ask you some questions and then I'm going to sure. hit Terry up about the answers to the questions. If you, <laughs> if you and I don't know, we can go, we'll always be able to go to Terry mm-hmm. and get those answers. Okay, good. <laughs> well, it's I'll give you the short and conditioned version of it because it is a long story. But my daughter was started attending a youth group here at a local Baptist church. Um, we didn't have a youth group at our church. You know, we just started. And so um, she started attending. Um, I got to know the youth pastor. Um, he was uh, a great guy or is a great guy. And he ended up leaving the church. My daughter comes home one Wednesday night and says, hey, Pastor Jeff, is his last Wednesday is next week. So I called him. He and I become friends. I said, hey, man, what's going on? You know, And he said, ah, just, just time to go. You know, But I've been around ministry long enough to know that there's always more to the story. You know, So I just left it alone. And several months later, he calls me out of the blue. And he's like, hey, you know, the, the, the church um, that uh, I was at, they, they no longer have a senior pastor. Uh, can I give them your number? You know, they, they're, they're kind of like for you to that. take over or something. Do you either well, be the senior pastor? Know. I mean, that, that was kind of what his thoughts were, you know? Um, and so I said, sure, you can give them a number. So I ended up sitting with down meeting with um, their, their leadership team. Now the church had fractured. It kind of had a church split. Some things went down. I won't get into here, but um, so they were fractured, you know, and they were kind of grasping at straws, what to do. They were left with little pastoral or no pastoral leadership. And so I met with them and I said, Hey, well, I can offer to fill the pulpit for you. Um, 
you know, this was, much- on, but this was on top of your other responsibilities at your church plant, yeah. your fledgling yeah. church plant. I'm yeah. So my, my, my church plant is, <laughs> is going We're two services. And so I was teaching my, my church in the morning and then jetting over there uh, like at 11 o'clock and teaching for them and doing that. And then we just developed a relationship. And so they have a, a student building, a youth building on the back of their property. That's like 6,000 square feet or 7,000 square feet. It's big. It's got a cafe space, like a coffee shop in there. Um, and so we went in there, they offered us, Hey, just use this, you know, free of charge. And so, um, we started meeting in there, we painted in there and, um, upgraded it, you know, put some decor, just made it look like it in less of a youth space and more of a church. And, um, we've been meeting there ever since. And so that was in G- the end of January of this year. Nice. And you, that's, that's a good what, reason why I brought this up is because what is it, I mean, in your experience, and it sounds like it's been a good experience so far, so good, but yeah. working Working together with other churches that maybe are not, um, I hate to say like doing so well, or they're not, um, they're not as vibrant or as vital as they used to be. A lot of the older uh, churches in many cities are dwindling in church attendance. I mean, that's just across the board really due to, you know, the, a lot of reasons, but what, what would you say? Like, is that something that is a good idea to reach out to some of these churches? And how would you go about doing that? I mean, you kind of just walked into it, but. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely, I mean, the caveat is always left Lord tells you, but I definitely wouldn't just pick up a phone call or pick up a phone and call some church that's got 10 cars in the parking lot and say, hey, it doesn't look <laughs> like you're doing so good, you know, but through the context of relationships, you can have those conversations, uh-huh. you know. So Terry, it, Terry, in your experience, what's, I mean, that's probably wise advice, Kyle. Don't yeah. just say, hey, it doesn't look like you're doing so great. <laughs> I noticed you only have to Don't call over there and say, who's screwing up over there? <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you say to that, Terry, though? Because there's it's, the thing in my mind, I think, you know, you've got a, a space that can seat a couple hundred people, and we've got, uh, you've got a, couple, a space that can seat a couple hundred people, but not that. No, not the people to fill it. We've got a couple hundred, hundred people, but no space. It seems like a, a collaborative thing would be helpful. But what are your thoughts on that, Terry? Yeah, I, I mean, it sounds like there was a relationship already there with with Kyle and the other fellow, and there was already coffee over there too. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, it, so it was very conducive and very organic for that to come together. Um, yeah, but as far as like hitting someone up that's just you know you you don't know that's kind mm-hmm. of just you know, in town and that kind of thing. I, I just would look that up in prayer Mm -hmm. and stuff, but, you know, I think a lot of people were probably um, confronted with that during the pandemic where a lot of churches did drop in attendance. I know a large church in Austin, they were, I think they sat like about 600 and they dwindled down to, you know, from what I understand, almost just a couple of dozen and Mm -hmm. stuff. So I think that that was a time where pastors needed to be supporting each other Instead, we were kind of throwing mud at each other. You know? Yeah, and that's the, the sad thing. Against the, and the yeah. masked against the unmasked, and yeah. we could have done a better job of supporting each other. And Were you team mask or team unmask, guys? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was pro-choice during that. <laughs> oh, man, I got to edit that, though. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I think you nailed it, Terry, is the – it's the competition mindset, whereas we're, we're really working toward the same goal, the same kingdom. And it's hard. I just got to look, put myself in the other guy's shoes. You know, it's probably hard for them or the other board or committee shoes, whoever's in charge of the church. It's probably hard to see a church that was once, you know, especially like the older denominational churches, like we have several here in, in our town, like it was once thriving, it was once healthy, families were there, and now it's the families have all gone, it's just dwindling. It's got to be hard to look at that and say, you know, uh, you know, what maybe I could do something for somebody else type situation. But I don't know. Yeah. You know, I think it's really good for pastors to get involved in a pastor's community. Mm-hmm. And um, I know the city I'm in, they, they have one where the uh, pastors from, you know, the different churches come together. And, you know, when you're in that place where people are leaving or your church isn't growing or whatever it is, um, you have uh, other pastors there that can identify with you and pray with you and encourage you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Are you part of a, a pastor's group at all, Terry, in, in Austin? Um, yeah, I was in, uh, in, in Pflugerville. And so we've moved oh. out of town. So now okay. I no longer qualify. <laughs> oh, but, boy. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to find, uh, you know, one in our, our area where we're at now. We're now in the city of Round Rock, which is a little north of Austin. And so that's why okay. we dropped the Austin name because uh, uh, yeah. we kind of migrated a little further from Austin than we, we were. Mm -hmm. Great. Kyle, what about you? You connect with any pastors in your area at all? Besides yeah, the was, church that you're you're collaborating with, yeah, we. So I moved here and didn't know you know anybody. I was you know they say parachuting in, and so I reached out to several churches um, just to sit down and grab lunch with their pastor. Um, and I was kind of met with a little bit of a, at arm's distance from a lot, um, but there was a few that um, I got a chance to meet with, and there's uh, three guys that I semi-regularly get together once a month, once every couple of months, you know, we'll text each other. And then uh, an, another guy reached out to me um, in the next town over, and he's got a, a gathering with all kinds of pastors. So I went one time and I just can't go because it's on Tuesdays and I do things with my kids' school on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. so it just doesn't work out anymore. But that's been cool because I went to one t one time and it was really encouraging. And they've got guys from, there's a Catholic priest that goes. There and is, is in his uh, full get up. He mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Wow. He's a pre pre Presbyterian. Uh, there is uh, just at almost every denomination, which is actually really cool. And it, and the whole idea is we just ate breakfast and we talked and we just hung out and we prayed together. There was no book study. There was no agenda no, or anything. No agenda. Yeah. And it was actually really cool. So, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we deal about that with the Calvary family here where mm -hmm. uh, we get together once a month. Uh, those of us are in the immediate you know, within an hour's, I guess, drive. Yeah. And so there's about eight or nine of us that get together once a month, and it's really encouraging. And some of us have little churches, and some of us have big churches. Yeah. Yeah, that's so encouraging just to have that kind of a group, because you're able to you're able to talk and pray with guys that are in your same shoes and kind of deal with a lot of the same issues and stuff, to, to know you're not alone. And I think that's one of the things that, especially within Calvary Chapel, we, we can... I mean, we have done a good job in the past, and it's a little bit fragmented right now, but I, I really look forward to getting more camaraderie, unity around the things that we're, we're really um, passionate about, spreading the Word of God, teaching the Word of God, uh, planning churches, and uh, getting those, those fellowship groups, because it's just, uh, you, get, you sit down, you can get, you talk to someone online, that's fine, but you sit down with someone, you have a coffee or a meal, it really is a nice place to to fellowship over those things that are important mm -hmm. to us as pastors and church planters. So, so Bri Brian, as an outsider, you know, coming into Bradenton where you're at, um, did you experience some of the same things that I experienced or what was your, what was your experience like? Yes. Um, well, I knew uh, Pastor Carl Dixon. He's been on the show before and he's in Sarasota, which is about, his church is about 40 minutes drive south of us. And so he, it was really helpful to have him there. And, you know, we, we actually attended the church there for a while before we got started on Sundays. And then also uh, uh, Pilgrim, Benham, Pilgrim and Jenny were in, uh, in Bradenton, uh, East Bradenton from us, and they've since moved, but um, we had them there as well. So I, I knew a few people, which was helpful. And it was helpful because they kind of knew the lay of the land. Like now you're probably pretty familiar with Murfreesboro. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, back in the beginning, we didn't know. Um, we knew a few and we knew, knew enough. But that's, I just encourage anyone who's listening, if you're getting into church planting, pastoral ministry, to not only find a team that can work together with you, but also um, connect with those other like-minded churches in the area. And even, even not so like-minded, it's nice to get together and talk about like big picture kingdom issues, as long as, you know, there, there's no compromise on the, like the, the fundamentals of the faith type situation. Mm -hmm. So you agree, Kyle? I, I concur. Yes. Concur? I agree. I yeah. wanted you to wear your, uh, your robes and stuff at some point. Cause you, you do wear robes, don't you? When you teach. 
for all that. No, no. no. <laughs> Although we had baptisms on Sunday, uh huh. So we we did uh, some baptisms on on uh, this past Sunday, and uh, we did a combined service with. So it was Easter this past Sunday, and we did a combined service with the church here, the Baptist wow, church, and yeah. I preached. And so they actually had robes that you could get baptized in. And so nice. I said, no, we'll just do, we'll just do dark t-shirts and we'll be good without the robes. Uh -huh. Well, a, one person had, you know, spontaneously got decided to get baptized after the service. And so Did they have a baptismal in the, in the church. They, they did, but it's like way in the back. Like it's like this show. And so I brought okay. a, a baptismal up to the front of the stage and we did it right there in the front wow. of the stage. But this girl got baptized in the robe. So they, uh, that's my first. Did you put the robe on? I did not. I was on the outside of the tub baptizing, but she had the robe on. So, oh, it was good. yeah. Um, yeah. have you ever been, Terry, have you ever been to Israel to the Jordan River where they do the baptisms there? Yeah, I actually uh, had the privilege of baptizing a few people there. Yeah, yeah. So, they do the robes there too, Kyle. So, I've, yeah, I've been there. Right. Terry's been there. So, we've, we've done it. We wore right. the robes. We wrote, we wore them. I, I, wore I, didn't, I didn't want to admit to this, but I also yeah. was baptized in the Jordan in a white robe. What? Mm -hmm. yeah. Clark, Clark Van Wick. I don't know if you're familiar with Clark Yeah, Van yeah, Wick. of course. Yep. He, he baptized me in the oh, Jordan River. Oh, my goodness. You were holding Shout that in, man. You were holding that well, in. You just yeah. you didn't want to brag. No, I didn't want to flex. <laughs> you know, Chuck Maybe. Smith has a little plaque there that says, you know, thanks it. for your contribution or whatever. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, I gotta get me a plaque up there. You're gonna get your pla plaque there. You yeah. gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta plant more churches if you want that. His, there's like 1,500 churches out of Calvary Chapel now that he started. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I'm a little, a little behind, but I got some time. Yeah, you do. You do, Kyle. Thousand churches in a, in ten years. Yeah, you you personally do that. Yeah, I'm working on it. Um, we'll get going here in a second, but I wanted to talk about something before we leave that you brought up at the beginning or before we started recording, Kyle, and that was the importance of discipleship and training when it comes to these young guys that want to get out there and, and church plant. So you want to kind of introduce that topic, and I'd, I would love to hear what Terry has to say just with his experience on, you know, how do we, how do we create these, how do, how do we help the, these guys and girls many times and these church planning teams um, be prepared for the ministry ahead. Sure. Yeah. I think um, kind of the trap that uh, church planters, myself included um, can fall into is that, well, I've got to do everything by myself. And so they spend all of their time um, organizing everything. And to a certain extent, when you're just starting out, it is just you and your wife and your kids, but as soon as you start amassing some people, then it's quickly identifying those that you can build with and those that you can build on and start training them to take over wholesale, wholesale min, um, areas of ministry. Uh, Craig Rochelle said, I'll never forget it. He said, if they, someone can do something to 60% of your capacity, then give it to them. Wow. Yeah, and that's I'm like, good. 60%, 60 that seems crazy. He said, but they're never going to get to the 100 unless you give it to them, mm -hmm. you know? And so learning the hard way of not doing that, holding on to too much, yeah. you know. And, and so their hundred might be like way better than our hundred too. That's the thing we, that's the thing I learned is. is, yeah, is I'm, I think I'm pretty good at a lot of things, but that's just it. I'm, I'm pretty decent at a lot of things, but there's people in the church or people that want to help plan a church that are going to have the expertise and the ability that are, will far surpass um, ours. You know, it's like, would you rather have something done mediocre a hundred percent or really great 60%? Well, and the challenge is, is when they start doing things a little bit differently than you would, yeah. not to jump in and yeah, change it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then you're essentially saying, hey, yeah. do it exactly how That's I want hard. you to do it. That's and hard. And you're not creating a leader. You're creating a follower at that point. Do you mm. do that, Kyle? Do you just do you bite your tongue? I, I do. And my wife is like, she's like, ah, I'm like, just let them go. It's not the end of the world. If they're going to ruin something, then of course yeah, it's yeah. end. But if it's not going to ruin it, I'll just let them. You, you know, know what I do that I with? I do that with the sound guy. I do that with, I, I have to bite my tongue because I'm like, man, that, because I don't know what it is. Maybe it's OCD or something. I'm like, that needs to be louder or quieter or this turned up or that turned down. But I just leave it. I leave it. Glory to God. Yeah. yeah. Terry, what about you? What's... Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. My wife, Christy, and I, we talk about that a lot, how we really have to die to things, you know, yeah, because yeah. you are entrusting people with the 
personality and skills and gifts that God has given them. And it's always different than what you would do or how you would do it. It might even be a little messier or sloppier than how you would do it, Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, you know, you just have to kind of die to it and say, you know, okay, I won't do it that way. But, uh, you know, God's using them and God's growing them. And you want to give them uh, wings to fly and not clip their wings and micromanage. Yeah, that's it. It's micromanagement is what it really comes down to. And that's, you're not going to. Your ministry is not going to grow. Your church isn't going to grow. So I, I need some advice. Let me give you a, a, a scenario, and I'll get your advice, Terry and Kyle. Um, we're going through this right now at our church because, as I mentioned, children's ministry has been amazing. There's a gal um, named Susan who her husband is one of the elders here, and they've been here since day one. And she does an, a phenomenal job at children's ministry. She's an educator, um, and so she's she's very good at – she does the curriculum and everything – but now that the church is growing, it's difficult for her to scale with management of volunteers and all this different technology and stuff like that. So anyway, long story short, I uh, she said, is there someone that could take over to help scale the children's ministry to that next step? And so we've got a, a guy, um, one of the pastors actually here. There's three of us, me and, and Cody and Josiah. But Cody's going to oversee it and take it over. And so my, my advice would be, how do we make that transition to where she doesn't feel like all of her efforts, because she's very particular, but very good at what she's done. But it's one of those things where it might be done a little bit different and not as fine tuned. Cause you know, when you're growing, you, you have to kind of, you, ha- you have to have children's ministry at this first service too. That's one of the things. So but what would you say, what, what advice would you give me as a, uh, as a lead pastor in navigating this scenario that I just described? Yeah, and I, I know that it can be a little touchy with someone who's handing it off and wanting to be honored by keeping things going mm-hmm. with what she set in motion. But at the same time, the new people coming, they, they need to have that freedom to, um, you know, be led of the spirit, you know, and maybe take things in a in a different direction. I know when I hand off the church one day, mm. um, I don't expect them to do things exactly the way I do it or teach exactly how I teach. Um, but I know that God will use whoever that person is. I mean, I think a good example, and I know it's not children's ministry, but I think the, the point is the same. Like when uh, David Guzik took over the church for Ricky Ryan, I mean, mm-hmm. you can think of two different people. I know, you know yeah, for sure. Super Pentecostal, you know. That's in uh, Santa Barbara, right? Santa Calvary Chapel. Yeah, yep. exactly. And then you have, um, you know, someone who's not as, you know, um, how would I describe it? He was just like more on the Pentecostal side, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. And then David Guzik is probably more on the scholarly side. And oh, for sure. I was very curious as to how that transition would work, you know, because they're, but, um, you know, obviously David didn't follow Ricky's, um, you know, model. And the church has done quite well, from what I understand. Yeah. But, yeah. So I think just encouraging uh, that gal that, you know, things may go in a different way, in a different mm-hmm. direction. But thank you so much for all that you've invested in the kids Mm -hmm. and the door's still open for you to do that. Yeah. I think that's a good point. The door's still open. Like it's, we still want this, uh, Susan, obviously a great part of our church in in leadership and everything, but still having her involved, but also giving the freedom to that next person to be able to, to navigate the new, new territory. One of the advantages you have is that she's, realizes that she's hit her ceiling yeah she's hit her leg. exactly yeah it's, you know, it's it, a great she, she's great so yeah. if she didn't know then it could be weird with cody coming in but she knows mm-hmm. and so you know cody's willing to step in and so it's her kind of dying dying to self a little mm. bit she, which sounds like she's already doing yeah know, yeah totally realizing that she she can't go any further and so although it hasn't happened yet so it's is but that's the thing it's like when the guy's turning up the piano and it's over overpowering the people singing it's like i want to go back there and tell them to turn it down but i get and then i do your sound guy not to not to listen (laughs) 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 
Yeah, this is, you reserve this, the I'm going to give him this. You, I'm going to give him this yes. episode. I'm like, here, this is a good episode. I want you to listen to to this. We have some good content. So, no, so, it's and, it's and a multiple yeah. sound guys. That's the that's the deal. So, and I'll say this. I, I think you you need to as senior pastors. I'm I'm very relational just by nature, you know. Um and so you earn you put money in the bank relationally with people as you spend time with them and you love them well so that you can cash out and you can draw mm. when you need to. When it's so a little you bit go tougher. to him and say, Hey, look, you need to, you need to turn it down. He doesn't, he doesn't take it as a personal attack because he knows you, he knows your heart. Yeah. But if you only time you talk to him, it's like, Hey, turn that down. Yeah. yeah, what, yeah. That, what message is that? And I don't want to be a micromanager either. That's the thing. I don't want to be the guy that's always, you know, involved in everything. Although in some, to some extent, I am the lead pastor of the church, so there's involvement, but it's just that thing right. we talked about, giving them that that freedom to do as the Lord's leading. Yeah. Good. All right. Final words, guys. Terry, let's hear from you. Uh, by the way, I want to remember to to say we're going to be meeting on, Kyle, what's the date again? May 18th. May 18th. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Lunch is included or snacks or what are we doing? <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we're going to include breakfast uh, Ooh, for yeah, your okay. uh, presentation. It, it, lobster, I yeah, lobster. Uh, oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, we're still t- uh, talking about lunch. So, yeah. So a lot of good breakfast to eat around there, too. But, yeah, that's right. We provide that. But it's a free event. Free event, yeah. I'll be there. Kyle will be there. Terry will be there. Um, we'll not only be talking about church planting, but we'll also have some uh, sharing time and Q&As and stuff like that. So, really really valuable time to get together if you can make it. But Terry, give us some last words, last thoughts um, that you have. Yeah. Well, um, you know, church planting is probably one of the most fulfilling things that you can do. Uh, It's also one of the um, most challenging things you can do. And so if you, you're a church planner, just want to encourage you to hang in there and take advantage of uh, things like Cultivate that were there to come alongside of you, to help you, to see that you have the proper mentorship and training. And we, we just want to be alongside of you. Mm-hmm. Amen. Kyle, what do you got to say? That's it. Thank you. We've we've covered we it. did it. Yeah. Well, cult- cultivate is, it's, it's worth it your is time. It's great. It's great. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for being on the show, guys. I'm sure we'll have you back uh, for more. I've got um, questions about a lot of different things. And Terry, it was great having you on uh, the show and just your expertise and what you're doing. God bless you. Kyle, God bless you. We'll see you next month in Texas. Y'all take awesome. care. God bless. All right. God bless, guys. Bye.